Last round. Action. So what are we going to do? The culture of Veep is definitely unique because we do have the UK, US mixed crew. It's really about human behavior. In politics, no matter where you are, it's about survival. Clean Jobs Task Force likely to be greenlit. That is so great for me. And the country. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. What's really amazing about Armando is the process he's created. He's a fan of improv or putting things on their feet. He's ready to drop all of the material that he has written to see what you as an actor can come up with in a moment. We always get a loose take. We'll shoot the heck out of it and he'll say, all right, why don't we just make this one looser? Just have a bit of fun. Yeah, it's just, very just well. play about it. Yeah. There's a lot of improvisation. People talk over each other. You know, it feels incredibly real. I think Washington has been portrayed in the past as a pretty earnest place. And I think this is a window into a different Washington that might be a little bit more realistic. I thought for a long time, where, where should we set this? Should we set it in the Senate or the House or should it be in a governor's mansion? And then I just sat bolt upright one day and just said, should be the vice president. Armando's idea was a competent, accomplished woman who becomes vice president of the United States and the dysfunctional capital that we have now. Inherent in politics, there is comedy. I think because it's, it's, filled with conflict, and conflict is, can be very funny. Why don't we just wait this out, okay? Come back to the... Is that what you're gonna suggest? The VP, it's a funny position, I think, because you have very little power, but you are a heartbeat away from being the most powerful person in the world. Which way are you gonna vote? The way my principles and conscience tell me to go. Which way do you think that should be? America is very much into winners. So the last thing you want about your job is something that more or less makes you have to wear a big badge all day saying, I came second. It is so close to being important, but there are so many other people around you that have so much more power. Did the president call? No. No. I compare it back to British politics and like the deputy prime minister, that's a pretty useless role as well. It's like, you know, giving crayons to a kid at a family meal or something like that to stop them from misbehaving. Yeah, just, there you go. POTUS is anxious after recent events that you don't feel he's trying to nudge you out of the process of government. Oh, isn't that thoughtful, Amy? One of the cornerstones of comedy is the way you make something funny is you take it so seriously that it's funny. And I think that's what's so funny about the DC machine. They take it so seriously. It goes like right past drama up to like absurdity. If I can get cornstarch utensils in most federal buildings by the fall, well then, the Veep has landed. That is what we are working on, landing you. Yeah. Like a big, beautiful eagle. It's about people under pressure. That's what leads to them doing ridiculous things. You can't ignore that, you know, when when people are in a fishbowl that, I mean, they can just behave like, like ninnies. I'm gonna go back to the White House. That address makes me hard. Ooh. Kiss you, miss you. What has happened over the period of the show's development is that Washington keeps catching up with Veep and becoming even more farcical and ridiculous. And it's fun showing these really important people being annoying to each other, jealous of each other, rude to each other. Do I look like a pimp to you? You look exactly like a pimp. There's not a pushing for the comedy with this show because the circumstances are so whacked out. If you sit back and do it as believably as if it were to happen, that's hilarious because life is funny that way. At the show that I had just finished working on, I was trying to green up our set and I had some success. But where I did not have success was with the cornstarch utensils. Are you kidding? Yep. Do these not bend back? No. No. I wanted a cast who had all come through comedy backgrounds or, or improvisation backgrounds so that we had on set a whole gang of comedy brains. I love the idea of, of playing somebody who's made it but hasn't really made it. Julia's performance is extraordinary. She gets laughs that you didn't know were there. I could not think of one other woman who could handle the subtle funny of this and her lead in the scenes that we're all together 
set the tone. We all, you know, just try to keep up. Selena is a powerful person who is thwarted by the system. She's thwarted by herself in the system. She's thwarted by her staff. She will forever blame her staff. It doesn't matter, but it will always be their fault. It's your job to know that if I say I have it covered, I don't have it covered, and you cover me. When Selena was offered the, the vice presidency, she thought, well, I want Amy on board, and Amy was like, how good can this offer be? And you know, she got chief of staff. The chief of staff has to keep the vice president in the frame of mind that it's okay to be number two. And that's great. And that's an incredible position. God, if I mm. Don't say if I were president. It's the VP bear trap. I'll just think it. When we came out to do some research in DC, we were told about the body man, the guy who goes around with the bag. Gary is Selena's special assistant. Wherever she's at, I'm at. <laughs> I've got to carry around this large bag that has all of her stuff she needs, some public things, some unmentionables. It's a nice bag, Gary. You know, he calls that the Leviathan. Ooh. You got the nuclear codes in there, buddy? Sue's He's sort of Selena's guard at the door, if you will. The diary scheduler's job is, is there to protect her boss's time. You know, if you want a meeting, she'll probably say no. I schedule every minute of her life. Uh, pretty much no ins or outs without my permission. Got to talk to her for uh, one moment, no, please. No, she's actually really burdened right now with a bunch of uh, Sue, stuff. Sue, it'll take she's one found. second, she... literally. Mike, she's spinning. Oh, OK. This character, Dan, is prepared to do what it takes to get to the next level. He literally says nothing, does nothing, without thinking, how will this advance my career? Right. What can this do for me? And it's been really interesting to just play such a selfish prick. I cannot believe you are dating your boss's daughter. She's fun, she's sexy, she can advance my career. I really like her. Mike McClintock, and he's known Selena forever, and he's sort of on the tail end of his career. Mike is my head of communications. He's ineffectual. He means well, though, but he's a little bit tired. Actually, he's quite tired. You can't read everything. I don't read half the stuff I'm supposed to. Tim Simons plays Jonah. He is the person who the White House and the West Wing sends over to the vice president's office. I think he's very honest about his situation, allows him certain perks, and I think he's, uh, I think he enjoys causing problems for people. I'm sorry, ma'am, but you have drawn the fat straw. I will have all the relevant documents forwarded onto your teams. Okay, it's your bedtime. Get out of my office. Good night. We're shooting in Baltimore because a, it's proximity to Washington, D.C. It's easy to shoot here. There's great crew, great locations. It's hard to get close to any of the Washington locations. There's a lot of rules. It's a logistical nightmare to shoot in Washington. What we wanted to do, and, and the vice president's office was very helpful, was actually do an exact replica, which we built in this warehouse in Baltimore. We built uh, an exact replica of the corridor and the offices and her office and the bullpen where everyone else is. Oh, it's amazing. The hallway outside is almost an exact copy of the hallway at the Eisenhower building. It's a little bit bigger to accommodate for the cameras and whatnot. It's important that it seems real. There's a tendency to um, try to portray Washington in on TV and in film as, as, as a glamorous place. Um, and what we wanted to see was behind the white painted Georgian facade. A lot of it is shabby. I mean, anyone who's been around Washington knows a lot of the offices are very powerful people. People are shocked when they see them in real life because they're, you know, they're messy like anyone else's office is full of junk. An office desk and an office chair were clearly bought from different vendors. And so you have an office chair that doesn't fit under an office desk and they are paired together, and that's your workspace. I tell you, the art department and set dressing and props, and they, these people have worked so hard on this job. Ernesto Martinez, our costume designer and stylist, he's so good at thinking about the character's wardrobe as a closet. When I got the job and I got the call, I channeled Michelle Obama. You know, I just thought Michelle's style was really great for Julia. I wanted her to look good and sexy and yet powerful and emit that. Every town has its style, and DC does as well, so we're just trying to capture what it really is. At the end of the day, as actors, we're playing pretend, you know? And it's really fun to, you feel like a little kid again when you get to go back and you put on that costume that changes everything about you. It's like, oh, no, 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 I'm not Reed right now, now I'm Dan. And you really just get to just go and have fun. And, and all of our castmates, you, you can see that happen. We show up, 
come out of hair and makeup with our suits on or, you know, the, the, the wonderful dresses that Julie gets to wear and Anna gets to wear and Soupy gets to wear and everyone's in character and ready to go. Beep, beep. We use two cameras um, and that basically enables the actors to move around. They're on, they have radio mics, they can walk around wherever they want. It's very loose and very um, free-flowing. It is all handheld and we do it's, it is a challenge for the crew because we have to light a room 360 so the cameras can be swinging in every angle at any time. They're only very loose marks. The actors are given a lot of freedom to move around and the cameras are given loose direction on who to focus on. It's about finding the comedy and exploring the environment. I wanted to show a, a side of DC that people haven't really seen before. There's Congresswoman Clements, you should speak with her. She's got a small mustache, it's a little disturbing oh. at it. We wanted to see the, the when people go into work and they show their security pass and they sit at their desk where they are and what they're doing. You have uh, one community college meeting this afternoon. Is that it? Yes. It's a political comedy series that might really show Washington in all its uh, dubious glory. Don't you, yes, been ever say no to her? Oh, of course they do. Yeah, they do, yeah. There's a lot that's transferable, I think, from Britain to America in terms of the dysfunction of democracy. Why don't I know this? Because you're incompetent. I don't think there's been a comedy that has tackled Washington in quite this way before. I'm the vice president of the United States. That door should be half its height so that people can only approach me in my office on their knees. As an audience member, I love that kind of stuff. It's like eating chocolate all day long.